All right, so today we're gonna dive into another big live stream and one of the big topics that we will be covering and leading with today is gonna to be all this news on Audius and how does this flow into the creator NFT marketplace. My name is Paul Barron, welcome back to TechPath. And thanks for joining us live. Of course, the key here with the live topics is we wanna do some viewer questions. We'd love your comments. So if you've got something that you want us to talk about, we'll try to get to it. In the chat, we of course do prioritize our members, or excuse me, not our members, but our <laughs> subscribers and also a super chat. So feel free to jump in there and get going. Let's jump to our first story today. And that is Audius, blockchain-based music platform. Audius raises 5 million from music industry giants. And if you look at the breakout of this, Audius is a music, basically a music streaming a platform with over 6 million monthly users. Announced Thursday it's going to raise the 5 million from some of the industry's most trusted entertainers. And of course, that includes artists such as Katy Perry, The Chainsmokers, Nas, Jason Derulo, Pusha, Pusha T, excuse me, Mark Gillespie, and so on. So this is a big one, I think, in the sense of one, we're starting to see the mainstream of audio, or excuse me, the mainstream of entertainment really moving in the direction of where the market is going. And that is blockchain development. And blockchain development in a lot of these areas, where I think a lot of these creators are trying to figure out is really the platforms themselves. They've been kind of in a position where they've been utilizing platforms to grow their market space, especially in this new era of the digital economy. And the problem there has been, and as you guys know, if you are been in the YouTube space for very long, is there's a lot of gatekeepers that control that content, but also take a very big slice of the pie from the creators of many of these types of content. Audius is one of those. They have been able to create essentially a new platform that is block, blockchain driven, that will essentially tie the creator directly to the user. And that is Nirvana for creators. And it's a big thing, I think, when you look at kind of the evolution, much like streaming was an evolution for Netflix and streaming was an evolution for Spotify and Apple Music, blockchain is literally Web 3.0 for the next generation. And this is the direct to market that we have been waiting for. The question will be is, can they develop the platforms one fast enough? Can they get a big enough buy-in from the consumer audience and be able to transition a lot of those people into working environments, working ecosystems, and eventually working fan bases that really start to kind of track along with a lot of these entertainers. If you look at where Audius is here on Live Coin Watch, let's just go right there, uh, <laughs> funny. Um, Audius trading at $2.81, and of course this is right after its big push. It did have an all-time high earlier at the 494. You're seeing the seven day at 25%. That of course is the news, so definitely was not the time to buy yesterday. And uh, the seven day on Bitcoin right there at 19, so that's, that's a nice little move. But let's take a look at the chart a little bit here, just kind of the movement here that we've seen. Just in the 24 hour period, let's go to the seven day so you can kind of see how this move occurred. And right here is essentially that spike. So it is one of those things where it's buy the rumor, sell the news uh, on a project like this. And I do think that's gonna be something that we continue to watch with Audius. But remember, back to the chart here, in their 12 month, Audius, when they came out, they literally skyrocketed right here. And this right here on their volume, they were at 361, so still, not even near where they're trading at. So is there some room for you to trade into Audius with the development, because this was back in March of this year, is there some room for you to trade into Audius still and maybe get some opportunities there? And the only way to really kind of uh, define that is gonna be looking at sentiment, the money flow coming in, and also what kind of projects are coming at Audius in the future. So we're gonna be definitely be getting um, Okay, all right, so just a quick question here, and I wanna to jump to a couple of these that are coming in. I wanna to jump to the tree profit calculator um, question, let's get him. Is Audius for only audio, or are they also building a YouTube alternative? My understanding at this currently is this is an audio play, so it literally is a Spotify alternative in terms of blockchain development. So I would imagine, though, the, the capability is that eventually they will be going to movies, 
other entertainment, including maybe creators like YouTube creators. There's a lot there, but there's a couple of other players that we'll mention here in a moment that we'll jump to that uh, could potentially kind of be flowing in that direction. But let's jump to over here to Trade the Chain and take a look quickly of where Audius is. This is the one day, obviously very high sentiment right now, but I want you to look at the traction here pre-news. This was still in the negative sentiment in the past week, seven days, very high negative sentiment. And then we started to see rumblings of the news, a little bit of movement in the chart, and of course the tail end, which is where we started seeing the spike, not necessarily, even though we did see a little bit of this rise right here, which occurred right there on September 16th, price had held at around 240, and right there was your high at $3.20, and of course daily sentiment had it jumped up to 89.4, which is ridiculously high. Audius then recorrected and now trading right there at the $2.79 range. And of course, sentiment on daily holding it at 83. Still a very high sentiment number. And this is something we do look at. We do our own sentiment analysis and I'll show you the chart here in a second. But the point is, is that when you look at sentiment analysis, especially around something like this, because this is one of those things that is unique in the sense that it has the capability to really energized through a big influencer community, and that is the artist. So once these artists start really understanding how to utilize it, what its use case is gonna be for, and what the potential is, at that point, this could get very interesting because of the whole aspect of pop culture and how something like a game or even art starts to move up in value in terms of, you look at something like Axie Infinity, if you had been following that when it was on its elevator ride. This one is maybe to the 10X power, mainly because of the fact that it's employing the best of the best in the entertainment business. So there are some things that I think we have to be very, very quick to watch. And I wanna jump over to the chart here. We've got a couple of uh, other questions. Oh, this is a good one here. Let's take this one from uh, Bernard Konkin. Dear Paul, my question is, how do I, as a small record label, owning the rights to intermittent hip hop, rap, and the EDM tracks use or utilize audience? I think here are, this is a great question. And at least for me, and I'm in the media business, have been in the media business for 20 years. We've built multiple networks. Uh, Paul Barron Network is actually my fourth network that we've built in various industries and the key with any of your media empires that you're building is always going to be in your partnerships. So I would not be opposed if I had a small record label and had some artists under it, I think I would go directly to Audius and start trying to do a deal and others because there's some others out there that could potentially be a play and this is something that we could see a kind of a new ecosystem of how record labels are actually utilized by artists because a record label that becomes super intelligent in blockchain, super savvy on the tech that's driving it, much like what we saw with Gary V and what he has been doing with his agencies and helping artists and entertainers and influencers kind of amplify their game, he's done it because he's navigated those waters in advance. So if you're maybe in that uh, you know, mode, much like we are today, we do that with a lot of our clients and a lot of other verticals is because we navigate the media industry and how it works in a big, big way, whether it's doing virtual events, creating podcasts, doing video, and of course, bringing in all of the hosts and helping them create their own content. All that stuff our network does on an ongoing basis. That's how we generate income. So I think the big thing would be for you to maybe go in that direction. Uh, Price Rescue has one here. Wonder what will be the cheapest price I can get if I'm thinking to get in now. Let's take a look at that right now and jump to where we are in the chart for audio. So sentiment is holding right here at 5803. This was a, a sentiment and amplification that we had pulled prior to the news coming over from Hollywood, basically jumping into audio. Amplification was at 41.456. This is a fairly low amplification. Amp, amp scores that are under 50, uh, they're okay. They're not a bad amp score because we've seen 30s and even 20 amplification scores. But we did see a little bit of movement here. So this was the movement, but it did not give us the kind of spike that, we are, uh, that you would normally anticipate when you have a 50 plus amplification score. 
Now this movement right here, this small sentiment bubble, we scored at 60.02, up a little bit, but the amplification had risen considerably. And that's essentially what we got. And this was pre, let's kind of zoom in on that a little bit. This was pre, yeah, let's zoom up here a little bit so you can kind of see that movement there. This, this right here was pre the news where it started breaking loose because this right here is where it occurred. We were seeing a little bit of downtrend, news drops, and then of course, um, Audius is flying again. So my entry point for Audius would still be in this zone right here because that's normalized, which is going to be somewhere in the two, you know, 230 to 250 range if it makes it back there. That's going to be the big question is if Audius ever comes back to this or if we will start to see some additional movement. We are going to pull another sentiment bubble on Audius uh, for this week. We'll be able to pull that data and look at a forecast. Hopefully next week we'll try to get that out to you. We are going to do some things that are going to be kind of fun, and that is price uh, analytics that we'll be doing for our members of our Diamond Circle, which is coming up soon, in a way that you guys can engage and get more and early access to some of our proprietary data and also our research that sometimes we just don't have uh, time to get it out onto a channel. In many cases, like what you're looking at here, just to give you an example, I'll go back to the chart. We pulled this data back on September 12th, to give us this range right here. So when we're doing those, that's the perfect opportunity for our members to get in on our early sentiment analysis or token project analysis so that we can score it. And again, remember, we look more at sentiment than charts. Uh, even though we do look at money flow and we do have a lot of analysis going in that direction, in fact, we'll be having more and more shows that will be dedicated to market cipher usage. So we will be use, utilizing that with a new research analyst that's just joined the network. And I think that's going to be a big one uh, in being able to help you guys. If you are a TA analysis person, it's a good place to kind of start. Remember, if you have topics that you want us to touch on, uh, make sure and just hit them in the chat and we'll try to get to them. So you're thinking, all right, maybe I missed Audius and I'm thinking, hey, what, what could I get into? What would be the next thing that could be coming out. And that right there is gonna be this company right here. And that is Opulus, who essentially just raised about the same money as Audius did. The difference is they got a 6.5 million now. It wants more artists to sell NFTs through its platforms. And Opulus is basically a device launched by the founders, DIY, basically kind of a do-it-yourself music service, ditto. Uh, has caused ripples to the music business since it arrived earlier this year. This is a concern that I would have if I was a music label, back to your point, or record label, of this do-it-yourself platform, which SoundCloud had been an attempt at that. It just did not have the kind of ramp that we saw and the ability to really connect. And again, it was more of a gateway. But this potentially would ditto and what Opulus is doing. It's a blockchain-powered financial platform for artists in April, Opulus then operating as Blue Box hosted for uh, its first ever split music copyright sale uh, by artists via NFT, British rapper Big Zoo and US artist Taylor Bennett each successfully sold a collection of 1% stakes in the unreleased recordings of the via the blockchain. This again is getting back into this very creative way of how artists will start to be able to stake and or sell aspects of their entertainment and this is something that a lot of big wigs have kind of been pointing to for a while, including Gary V and what he's been doing in the NFT space around, is this going to change the whole ecosystem and the economics for how an artist goes to market? And I'm talking about more than just music. We're talking about YouTube creators, authors, all sorts of creators out there, including the podcast space, which has already kind of moved into this podcast 2.0 with the Lightning Network and how they can essentially reward podcast creators through Satoshi Drops. There's a lot there on where this evolution is going. It's very early, so if you're in on these projects before they get going, just like Opulus, which has not gone out just yet. But anyway, back to the story here. 125 of these items sold out in under 30 seconds with over 10,000 people trying to get into the sale. Buyers of these 1% stakes acquire worldwide exclusive fractional license to the sound recordings and ownership in perpetuity, which means you have it forever. 
Uh, now having completed a successful multi-million dollar financing round to fund, Opulus is of course uh, getting into wider range artists, which I think they're gonna start to see, especially with the fact that we've seen the deal with Katy Perry. So there's only so many. Now, could we see this kind of scenario start to affect and cause ripples into the space of the streaming business as we see the wars heat up between Apple and Spotify and, and to a certain extent, even Google? Uh, that's gonna be a big question. And I think the, the question will be is whether or not it is. This is the website for Opulus. Just go to opulus.org. You'll be able to see it both for creators and investors. So get in early, get on, get in there. You can also uh, create an account and actually go in and if you're a creator, start building your own NFT platform to go directly into your to user space. Back to my point of how does all of this start to affect the rest of the ecosystem that is out there. And the rest of the ecosystem, when you look at how this is moving, this is starts to really shift the dynamic around the mindset of how developers are thinking about how to capitalize on the existing user base that they already have. Who's got one of the biggest user bases out there? Who else but Spotify? So Spotify, of course, is kind of going at it from a different uh, approach. They added this right here, which was Spotify's Clubhouse clone adds six new weekly shows, some that tie into the playlist. But let me kind of zoom up on this just to show you a little bit about what they're doing. Uh, they launched its audio app and, of course, the Clubhouse rival. Uh, it's called Spotify Green Room. It's basically going to bring in a variety of different pop culture shows in music, a lot toward the LBGTQ IA community. Uh, we're gonna see Gen Z's and TikTok stars that are essentially gonna be the host of these. And the opportunity I think is a big one for Spotify. The problem that I see in this whole scenario with Spotify is this. Spotify has yet to tokenize this whole ecosystem. And until they do, and I don't understand why a company like this could not go out and acquire someone like a, acquire someone like an Audius or an Opulus or many other developers that are in the early stage do exactly what they have been doing for the past, you know, three decades in terms of Silicon Valley, going out and doing aqua hires, bringing in a blockchain team and start to tokenize what could become a new platform and come up with a new business model for these artists, because they already have, in many cases, they have the they have the captured market. They have the user base, which is ridiculously uh, large, and they also have the connection to all the artists. Now, the key is, how do they build a business plan that starts to move in a direction that is blockchain driven? That's going to be the, I think, the billion dollar, maybe trillion dollar question because whoever figures this out in the mu music and movie and entertainment industry is the next evolution of what we're going to see because this could also go into VR, a lot more NFTs. There could be so much available here to a company like Spotify who has a ton of resources. I'd love to see them kind of move in that direction. This next little point here that I'm talking about kind of confirms this whole topic of where I'm going with Spotify and why is it important for artists and also creators to start to utilize non-fungible tokens in a different way. And that is this topic right here. Open CEO says the era of pure collectible NFTs is over. Now, let me explain what he means by this. The issue that most NFTs have been utilizing, most of it has been these gifts these small art elements and whether you're, you know, a board eight yacht club or maybe you're a fame lady or you've got all these different, you know, NFTs out there that you maybe you're involved in and or you are a creator of those, the digital artists. That's the issue that he's addressing is that that market for the collectible, unless you've got something that really surrounds the next era of collectibles in terms of involving the whole experience. And this is something that Gary Vee talks about. And I know I'm dropping Gary's name a lot, but the point is Gary understands what is happening in this space. And I think the big key here is that it's huge in the sense that if you can start to tie in all of these things that are experiential and tie this into blockchain usage case scenarios with new tech and the opportunity for that to grow, 
unlimited on where this might go. So the David uh, Fenzer, and of course we know what happened over at Op uh, uh, OpenSea just this week where we had a little bit of insider trading by their uh, head of product development. Really a crappy situation, but one that did happen. But his point basically says, co-founder OpenSea expects a shift in the, in the place to uh, the market for digital collectibles, artists and performers will increasingly sell NFTs paired with real world perks and virtual experiences. That's what I think is and where a lot of people are pointing to now is to create those real world experiences or something in a virtual community. Much like what we're doing, we're gonna be doing a lot more virtual events uh, on our own channel. We'll have some real world meetups at some point. All those kind of things will start to create an ecosystem for tokenizing content and tokenizing creator content. And all of this plays back into what Audius and Opulus and many of the NFT creator platforms are really pushing toward. But more importantly, this is where the creators are moving. And I think that's the thing you've got to keep your eye on for sure. All right. So I'll jump to a few questions here. We've got one from Christian Mateos. Um, all right. CoinMarketCap says it's available on FTX, but it isn't. Any other suggestions? I would check out right here. And you can also go over to CoinGecko. But right here, it'll give you a little bit of where you can purchase Audius. I'm thinking you're referencing Audius right there. So you've got, of course, Binance and uh, what looks like Gate.io. Let's see if there's any others in there that you can go to. Bitstamp, Hotbit, Uniswap, of course, would be the place. Uh, and then, of course, Binance is where, where I would go. And then, of course, you can get it on FTX. Okay, so there, there you go. So you were saying it isn't available on FTX yet. So, hmm, that's interesting because I haven't looked on FTX to see if it is available there. So that's a good one. We should reach out to them and see. But uh, looks like Binance might be your, your spot for that. The other thing is, is that this is going to get listed quick, I think, with the action and some of the movement that we have seen in the space. So that's a good possibility that we'll continue to see that. Let's talk a little quickly about what we're going to be doing with uh, both user or our viewer questions and also some of the programs. Diamond Circle is coming. The way the program is going to work is it's going to have a membership style approach that is based on loyalty, meaning the more you inter inter interact with the channel, then we're going to do some cool things with providing you access to custom content. And best of all, we're going to drop and share back money to our audience and to our members, to our viewers and subscribers in a way I think that you guys are going to be very surprised. Uh, and we're really excited about it. It's going to be a really big program in being able to go in this direction. If you have some tokens or projects that you'd like us to cover, make sure and just hit them in the comments below if you're watching this post the live. It's the best way to communicate with us. Also, you can reach me on Twitter, which is just at Paul Barron. And that's, uh, that's another quick way. And of course, if you have an idea for a show and you're thinking, hey, there's a CEO interview we'd love to send or see, send an email over to our producers. And that's just producers or producer at revernetworks.com. That's the best way to do it. All right, we're going to catch you guys next time right here on TechPath. Good to see you all on the live stream. Stay tuned and we'll see you soon.